Before the legalization of pot in Canada, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP, carried out raids on illegal grow operations. One such operation became Canada's most bizarre but wholesome story about a man who called himself the Bear Dude, Alan Pichet. When the RCMP investigated a tip and arrived at his grow op, they were surprised to find 10 or more bears roaming the property. Police allege that Pichet created a team of black bears to intimidate intruders and protect over 1,000 marijuana plants. The police case against Pichet, however, eventually crumbled. As reported by the BBC, Canadian TV News, the CTV News, CBC slash Radio Canada, Tame Bears Guard Canadian Marijuana Farm. Neighbors explain that Alan Pichet has been feeding black bears for a decade. Back in 1979, Pichet and his wife Kate relocated to a small, secluded cabin in British Columbia, Canada. The property was situated approximately four miles above a town named Christina Lake. After settling in, they placed a bird feeder outside to feed the nearby wildlife. However, they soon realized that bears had been dismounting the feeder to access the food. The family they had was ever-growing. It's composed of a fawn named Tuyela, two dogs, a couple of cats, and soon, more than two dozen bears. Also part of this unconventional but welcoming family were Natasha, a Vietnamese potbelly pig, and a little dude, a rescued raccoon. Toyella was first to join them, and although she was skittish, she was Kate's beloved child. After eight years together in the cabin, Pichet and Kate divorced on good terms. Kate with Toyella moved into another cabin further down the remote property and continued to feed the local wildlife. Sadly, Toyella passed away, and in turn, Kate began feeding bears. At the time, Puchet opposed the idea because of hefty food expenses and repeated warnings from conservation officials. Kate returned to Ontario after a warning from conservation officers. With Kate gone, the bears disturbed Puchet for food. In the summer of 1998, Pichet had a significant encounter with a black bear named Cutie Pie, or Pie. After befriending Pie, other bears started visiting Pichet's property, increasing their numbers to double digits. Below in the description is a list of all the bears' names found in Pichet's book. At first, Pichet would chase them off, but as time passed, he grew to love the different personalities of his companions and appreciate their company. But with over 20 mouths to feed, Pichet encountered a significant financial problem. Every week, Pichet would visit the nearby grocery shops in Lake Christina to purchase a pallet of 27 16 kilogram bags of maintained chunks dog food to feed the bears. As per the article in McLean's, Pichet had spent $10,000 on the animals between August to October 2010. To tackle his crisis, Pichet decided to start an outdoor pot growing operation. He got the idea from people he knew who had made money in the same business. Pichet used the tarping method for his grow up, which enabled him to quickly cover and secure his operation if a helicopter flew over. Unfortunately, his operation didn't last very long. Local police, the RCMP, received a tip about a pot scheme and decided to take action in July 2010. They drove to Pichet's secluded lot to conduct a bust. Pichet was notified about the incoming raid approximately 18 times. However, he was unaware of the notifications and did not check his phone the entire day. The RCMP apprehended Pichet and took him to a station in Grand Forks. While he was there, the RCMP were still at his property. There, they ran into 10 or more of Pichet's bears. At first, they were cautious. But soon officers realized that the bears were friendly and continued their raid. During their raid on Pichet's property, Mounties found out that the bears weren't the only inhabitants there. They also discovered his frantic potbelly pig Natasha. In the bedroom, they found a raccoon named Little Dude, with his legs spread across the bed. As they conducted their search, Little Dude followed their every move. Briefed by CTV News, RCMP Corporal Dan Muscalek said, quote, when a search of the house was conducted, our officers came upon a pig roaming around the house and disrupted a raccoon from his afternoon nap in one of the bedrooms. 
The pig was a little frantic at the sight of police, but the raccoon was pretty laid back about the bus and took it all in stride, unquote. Finally able to return home, Puchet found his property and garden in ruins. However, his bears were eagerly waiting for him and their treats. Puchet referred to the event as an unfortunate incident. Shortly after the incident, some thieves broke into the RCMP station where the crops were stored. They then stole a portion of the stockpile and tampered with evidence. However, the RCMP was able to recover the stolen stash and charge a man for theft. The Conservation Officer Services now had to solve the bear problem. They visited Pichet numerous times to warn him to stop feeding the bears. If he didn't, quote, fed bear, dead bear, unquote, would be implemented. An article in McLean's documented an explanation given by Aaron Canyell, a conservation officer from British Columbia. Quote, Bears that rely on human food are conditioned to want that and they act different than if they were in the wild. It's a major safety concern. Unquote. Along with the raid outcome and the conservation warnings were the news reports. When he found out that his story circulated worldwide, Puchet disliked how the media portrayed him. They claimed him to be a pothead who used bears to guard his pot farm, which was not the case. However, the news articles shed light on the government's decision to put the bears down. This led to a woman from Alberta, Canada starting an online petition to protect the bears, which garnered over 2,500 signatures. As a result, the government began exploring alternate options for the bears. Whenever Puchet gained the opportunity, he tried to convince the conservation officer services that diversionary feeding or weaning the bears over five years was the best approach. His research shows that bears will eventually go back to their natural instincts over a couple of years. This method will prevent the bears from behaving suddenly and recklessly while looking for food. It will be safe for both the bears and the neighborhood. Puchet was permitted to wean the bears until they went into hibernation, but after spring, he had to stop. Before his major court case in December 2011, the conservation officers' services had destroyed about 24 to 36 bears. They claimed that some, most likely, are Puchet's bears. During court proceedings, conservation officer argued that due to Puchet's actions, bear population in the area had abnormally increased. Since 2004, there were only about 2 to 50 bear complaints per year, but in 2011, they received over 256 complaints. Officers believe that most of these reports were related to Puchet's bears causing disturbances in the neighborhood and damaging property. Puchet admitted guilt in feeding the bears, however he denied the previous allegations and stated he had been feeding the bears a decade without harm to the surrounding area. Pichet also argued that he cannot be held responsible for the bears who were causing trouble, as his bears were not tagged and therefore cannot be proven to be his. Judge Ronald Fabro believed that Pichet's actions had the potential to harm both bears and people. However, he decided that a $6,000 fine was sufficient punishment and jail time was unnecessary. Pichet denied the drug charge and pleaded innocent to starting a grow operation. In an affidavit, the RCMP claimed to have seen Puchet's pot plants when they flew over his land. However, Puchet's defense argued that the plants were not visible due to the black tarp covering the greenhouse. The Crown persisted in trying to worsen Puchet's situation. The government was determined to seize Puchet's land because he had used it for illegal activities. In addition, his cabin caught fire in September 2012. Eventually, the civil forfeiture was withdrawn if Pichet agreed not to grow any more pot and feed bears. Pichet agreed to the terms. As a result, the pot charge against him was dismissed in December 2012. Pichet's relationship with bears started in 1998, when he met Pai, which lasted for almost two decades until 2014. After his last season with Pai, Pichet returned to Ontario, Canada to live with and care for his elderly mother. Alan Pichet has written a book, The Bear Dude Story, to raise awareness about his endeavor and the peaceful nature of bears. What a wacky but wholesome story. I would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and like this video. 
check out these other two videos on some interesting topics. The sources for this video are in the description below. I also do suggest that you read his book to gain a better understanding of this whole situation from his perspective. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would like to thank you for watching.